at is defining learner independence in the context of an EAP environment. But before looking at an actual definition, I'd like to look at um, some student voices and where they are in relation to this continuum of independence. The first student we're going to look at is Miguel. And Miguel was a student from South America, he was from Mexico, Central America, and he decided, he was very keen, a very enthusiastic student, and he decided that he wanted to work on improving his vocabulary, because he felt vocabulary was the biggest drawback in terms of, um, of his ability to communicate. So he decided that he'd start at the very beginning of the dictionary, starting with the letter A, and work his way systematically through. He was independent in one kind of way, but Another student, this is somebody who's still with us, um, she, Maha came to us back in 2007, hoping to, oh, sorry, 2008, hoping to start a PhD in January 2009. She attended lots of classes, she was very good at communicating, and <coughs> she was very bad at writing in English, and she used every possible excuse not to actually commit to doing homework assignments and not actually taking responsibility that this was the area that she needed to work in. She used many um, avoidance strategies. And she didn't pass, she didn't get onto a PhD course. She came back to us again and she's now with us, this is the second year, the cycle of the second year, and she's still asking about well, what are the, how do I know which of the important words to learn. So she's never really taken on board this whole idea of taking responsibility for the learning. She's also the kind of student who wants one-to-one -one feedback in terms of if, uh, written language. If she gets, um, normally we give advice to students and they have to think about it and they have to try and correct their own errors before giving that to the teacher. But she always said, well, I don't really understand the feedback. And please, can you tell me what to do? She doesn't want to accept responsibility. It's always good to have a um, good example of a student positive thing to reinforce that learner independence can actually um, happen. This is a student who came and in the beginning was very, um, very surprised at the amount that she mainly had to do in terms of working in her own subject area. At, at Reading we have a class where my students are divided into the subject groups as far as possible and they have to do a research topic in their own subject area, fairly independently, where they're putting into practice the skills that they're learning in all of the other classes. This may be similar to what we do here as well on pre-university courses. So I'll be talking a little bit more about this this afternoon in the workshop. But this particular student, after a while, um, probably into draft two of the essay, did finally think, yes, now I'm at home here, I can find my way around the library, and did manifest these very independent skills. So I'm going to move on now to the definition of learning independence within the EAP context. It's a willingness and an ability. And I think this idea of willingness is very important. Our first example, Miguel was very willing, but he didn't have the ability to actually decide, to actually choose the most effective way of learning recovery, even though he had been exposed to various strategies in the class. <clears throat> to take responsibility, to take ownership, and to realize I'm the one that's ultimately responsible about how well, how well I succeed here. Our student Maha was always finding outside excuses for why she couldn't do her homework, why she wasn't making progress, why the result in the exam wasn't really the level that she was, and she was really much higher. So she never really took on board um, the responsibility of her own learning. And it's necessary to apply the, um, the appropriate academic and linguistic competences. And by academic competences, I'm talking about the ability to think critically, to evaluate, to be confident about your research skills in terms of finding information and being able to put it all together. And having a certain resilience in terms of understanding that when you're trying to write an essay, that it doesn't necessarily come easily, it's something that has to be struggled with and gone back to again and again. And linguistic competences, I'm referring to an understanding of the concepts and ideas of how the English language works to the extent that you can use the language to um, express the ideas that you want to say in your own voice. And you can manipulate it to get the substance of language that you need. So there are quite high demands 
and many students struggle to get to the level that they need. And many of them, in fact, they will be on their mainstream courses, the masters or PhD programs, and it's through the process of that that they will actually develop these competencies for. But on the pre-sessional courses, that's what we're aiming to try and help them to do. And this is all in order to function effectively in the academic community. The whole idea of learner independence is very much an ongoing dynamic process. It's not a state that one achieves. It's one that one is striving towards all the time. That's the definition there. And in relation to critical thinking, it's related in terms of the ability to question and analyze, not to take anything for granted in terms of what you're presented with in lectures or what you're presented with in texts. Something that some of our students, international students, don't easily do. It's the ability to think things through, not jump to judgments. For example, if you get an essay question or an assignment that you have to do, that you think, well, what exactly is the tutor demanding here? What's expected? What have we been doing in lectures that will help me in terms of understanding this question and what's required? And finally, to make decisions. Again, reiterating this whole idea of being independent. If you're a critical thinker, you're having to, you need the ability to be able to make decisions about which text to choose, which ideas to leave out, which comparison to make, what connections to look for in terms of what you've already looked at. So what are the challenges of learner independence and fostering it in the classroom? Well, an EAP classroom has a very diverse student profile, which is what makes it a wonderful situation to be teaching in. Because you are constantly challenged by different ideas from different cultures, individuals of different ages and backgrounds and experiences. The expectations, many people come to the UK and they expect that, that they will be welcomed by UK by British students. Unfortunately, that's not the case at all. British <laughs> students are very caught up in their own lives and don't necessarily put out figures for international students. And international students find it very difficult to make that initial contact and, and reach out. Of course, I'm generalizing here. There are individuals, as there are in any situation, to, to this room. Um, they also, we have a number of mature students who come to us, and they may come from a cultural background where they have been considered as very good at English. And then they come to the UK and they find the way that they've been able to um, communicate in Iraq, for example, which is a country students don't easily have access to the outside world from. And when they come to an English-speaking environment, they may not be able to communicate their ideas in, in an efficient way at all. And this can be very demor demoralizing for them. Many of our students also will have um, important, responsible roles in their own country. And then they come to a classroom where they're in with 19-year-olds who have very little life experience and have just come straight from school. So you've got that going on in the classroom as well, which can make it um, quite a complex situation to deal with. In terms of students maintaining their, their confidence and being open to learning, sometimes you find there's a defensiveness which hasn't got anything to do with the language itself, but it's more to do with the cultural background, their, their experience of life and the insecurity that they may be feeling in a particular situation. You also have the individual factors. Every group obviously is made up of individuals as well. And we all know that class dynamics are good and a group of individuals get on well together. You can take them wherever you want to go. From. And on the other hand, you have another group where they don't quite gel together and you might do the same kind of activities, but it doesn't work in the same kind of way. And then there are, going back to the basics about um, learning style, what learners believe, learning is all about. Maybe they come from a culture where they've done a lot of rote learning, where they've memorized, where what they've had to know about has been quite limited, and they've just had to regurgitate. Maybe they haven't been studying for quite a number of years, and traditional roles of teacher and, and student in the classroom have changed. And for many of them, the kind of tasks that we do on pre-session courses, for example with peer assessment, getting them to work in groups, can be very difficult for them to, to understand in terms of being effective because they still think the teacher is the expert, so he or she should be the one that's communicating with me or telling me what I need to do. 